Welcome everyone for joining me. Brief technical challenge right there. My name is Reed Summers and I'm broadcasting here on behalf of the new message from God. And on behalf of my father, Marshall Beyond Summers, who has received the new message from God over a 30 year period. I'm with you tonight to share with you the newest revelation of the new message to be released by Marshall. This revelation is titled The New World Prophecy. And tonight we're going to listen and read this revelation for the first time, never been revealed in the world before. And I'm pleased to be able to bring that to you now. So to begin, I'd like to share a little bit about this revelation that you'll be hearing. This revelation is really here because of the state of the world today. The world is in a predicament so big and so dire that a divine answer and warning and blessing has been given to awaken people to the true state of the world as it actually exists and the true pathway to resolving the current crises in the world and preparing for the future that may be very different than what many of us see for either ourselves or for humanity at large. The revelation today is fundamentally a prophecy. It's a prophecy about the present and about the near future and about the deep future. And I'd like to invite you to take a moment, just within yourself, uh, check in, just check in, take a breath, get connected, and see how you feel about the world today. Just in a moment, how do you feel about the world today? I'll give you a moment for this. And now I'd like you to feel how, how do you feel about the world two years from now? How do you feel about the world two years from today? And finally, consider how you feel about the world 10 years from today. What does the world feel like in 10 years? I don't know about you, but to me, the world feels pretty disturbed right now and in some serious trouble due to a number of forces, everything from the state of the environment and our effect on the environment, uh, change in climate and all of the weather disasters that that's going our way. And then just the state of our human unity and cooperation within that natural environment that is so degraded and so disturbed. And that's just one little slice of it. There are many other slices of the true picture. And when you go out two years, I would wager that many of us don't feel like it's a better picture. And if we go out 10 years, it's, who knows? Who can say where the world will be in 10 years, given what we see moving and shaping it in the present moment? And so that's why this revelation is here. It's to help us see what is coming in 10 years, even 20, 30, 50 years. And to take action now, because to be ready for anything, you have to prepare way in advance. And so if we're going to be ready for what comes in two or six or 10 or 20 years, we have to be preparing for that now, both individually and as a world. And that is why the new message from God is here. I'd like to share a few passages from the New World Prophecy that we're going to hear and read today. You are entering a new era a new time, a new reality. Ready or not, prepared or not, wise or foolish, you are entering this new panorama of life. For those who have vision and are sensitive, they have known they would be living in times of great and turbulent change. 
For those who can see beyond their own ideas and beliefs, who are not total prisoners of their ideology, they can see and feel the changing world. For the perspective, sorry, for the perceptive and the receptive, they are already feeling the power of the future. I'll read to you two more passages. Humanity is facing shortages of food, water, and vital energy resources around the world, which will affect ever-growing numbers of people as you perceive. It is facing a world that will be devastated by a change in climate, and by the disruption of humanity's ability to grow enough food, to supply enough water. It is facing growing economic and political instability, which will reveal not only human corruption, but the weakness and the fragility of the infrastructure upon which all of humanity is now built. You are facing a devastated world where it will take everything humanity has to establish and secure its position here. The great sharing of resources, the great sharing of scientific knowledge, the disarmament and a cessation of conflicts and hostilities. This must be the consensus of the world. And with that, let's listen to this new revelation from the new message from God. This was received by Marshall Vian Summers in the state of revelation. And the voice that you will hear is the voice of an angelic presence speaking through Marshall and delivering this message for all people to hear. Creator of all life has sent a new message into the world. A new message unlike anything that humanity has ever received before. A new revelation for this time and for the times to come. And with it a greater prophecy about humanity's future and the great danger that the human family now faces. God's revelations are rare. They do not come often at all. And their wisdom and the depth of their teaching is meant to last a very long time. For it will take people a very long time to fathom the depths of this new revelation. It will take centuries to fathom its depth. But humanity does not have centuries now. It has reached a great threshold, a turning point in its evolution, where it will have to face a world in decline, a world that has been overused and abused through human greed, uh, human ignorance, and human conflict. It is a time when humanity will have to face a, a world of declining resources and environmental disruption. A time when it will have to face the great ways of change, which are now coming to the world and which are already striking many, many places at this time. Humanity has reached a great threshold where it will have to face the realities of life in the universe. And the encounter with certain forces and groups who are here to take advantage of humanity's tribulations, humanity's ignorance and naivety. It's a time unlike any time ever before. And the dangers and the opportunities for the human family are greater now than at any time ever before. In the face of the great ways of change and competition from the universe over who will be dominant and sovereign within this world, humanity will face a great decision, 
a decision for its leaders, its governments, and its people? Will it fight and struggle over who has access to the remaining resources of the world? Will it ignore the evidence of intervention here by races who are here to prey upon humanity's weakness and humanity's conflict? Or will nations and leaders and peoples recognize the great danger that faces all of humanity, living in a declining world, facing now competition from beyond? Will it choose then, in light of this, a greater cooperation, a greater uniting of resources, of wisdom and strength, individual talent, and collective abilities to secure the world and to prevent intervention here, which it is within humanity's power to accomplish. People know not of the great times in which they live, though many people all over the world are feeling anxiety and trepidation about the future. And well, they should, for humanity is facing a very difficult set of circumstances now. It is facing shortages of food, water, and vital energy resources around the world, which will affect ever-growing numbers of people as you proceed. It is facing a world that will be devastated uh, by a changing climate, and by the destruction humanity's ability to grow enough food and supply enough water. It is facing growing economic and political instability, which will reveal not only human corruption, but the weakness and the fragility of the infrastructure upon which all of humanity is now built. People live their lives preoccupied with little things, striving to meet important requirements and fanciful notions if they can afford it. But little do they know as they are facing such a great trial and tribulation in the world. A trial and tribulation for which humanity is unprepared and largely unaware. It is because of this that the Creator of our life has sent a new message into the world. A message unlike all the great messages that the Creator has sent here before. And humanity must now realize its great predicament and recognize the one chosen to bring this new message into the world. He is not a God. He is not an angel. He is a man. But he has been burdened and charged with this responsibility, a responsibility that he alone cannot bear. Humanity does not have an answer for the great threshold it is facing. It does not have a solution. It knows nothing of the greater community of life into which it is now emerging. And it does not realize the power and the extent of a declining world to deprive it of its most fundamental rights and opportunities. It will take great courage and strength to face these things, and you will have to set aside your grievances, your anger, your repudiation of others, to have the strength and courage to face a changing world and a new reality. God knows that you cannot do this alone without great support and guidance. And that is why the new message has been sent into the world. This message is so great and vast. It deals with every aspect of the human experience, particularly revealing the deeper nature 
of human spirituality and the deeper mind that exists within each person. deeper mind that is here to guide and to protect each person. A deeper mind is waiting to be discovered and followed and expressed. If humanity is to survive the great race of change, if it is to have the restraint to refuse the inducements and the persuasions of those who are here in the world, then it must grow up, become mature and responsible, realizing its strength and recognizing its hazards. This is not a time for the faint of heart or the oblivion. This is not a time for those who are greedy or self-possessed. For they will not fare well in the great ways of gene. And they will not have the strength to withstand the persuasions and the influence that we cast of our humanity by those from the universe who are skilled in these efforts. You are facing a devastated world where it will take everything humanity has to establish and secure its position here a great sharing of resources, a great sharing of scientific knowledge, a disarmament, a cessation of conflict and hostilities. This must be the consensus of the world facing a greater community of life. But the universe that you are facing is unlike what people expect and anticipate. It is a universe that is not human and has no regard for the human family. Save a few races who are free and who would value your freedom even from afar. But those free races are not in the world treaty and those who are are deceiving humanity, casting persuasion and influence over the weak minded seeking to establish the influence in the corridors of power, in government, religion, and commerce. This is the great predicament you face. It was destined to happen, for you cannot escape the reality of the greater community. And it has not come before because humanity was not well established and did not demonstrate the potential for power until quite recently. Humanity is bespoiling the natural wealth of this world, and that has caused the intervention to begin. For there are others who seek to have the wealth of this world and to subjugate humanity to garner that wealth for them. This only seems incredible and unbelievable because you still think you are living alone in the universe, having evolved for so long in a state of relative isolation. But your isolation is over and you will never have it again. And from these times forward, you will have to protect the world and decide who may enter this world from beyond. And what will be the requirements of their visitation? All of humanity's armaments and all of its technological skill will have to be employed now to protect the world from the outside and to restore the world's productivity and biological balance here in the world. Doubt this you doubt the will of God. Doubt this and you doubt your own deeper experience, which is telling you that you are facing a dangerous world and a great precipice. Doubt this uh, and you will deny your deeper experience and your deeper connection to God. 
who God speaks to each person at a deeper level. But people do not know this and have not learned to hear and to respond. That is why God seems so absent in the world, so foreign, so distant, so uninvolved. Because people cannot hear and cannot see. Preoccupied they are, dominated they are, obsessed they are, impoverished, or driven by the desire for wealth and power. God's new message is not here to fulfill human expectations or to validate the human understanding, but to reveal what you cannot see and to stimulate a deeper knowledge within you so that you may recognize the essential truth and urgency of God's new revelation. You are living in quiescent times since the West Sea nations still. But this quiescence will not last. And you need time to prepare. You need time to gain access to the deeper knowledge within yourself. You need time to reconsider your actions, your work, your relationships, where you live and how you live. You need time to learn about the greater community of life into which you are merging, which only God can reveal to you completely, without deception or dishonesty. Be you a Christian, or a Muslim, or a Buddhist, or of any faith tradition, you need this fundamental education now. It is essential for all of humanity to gain greater strength in this regard, or you will not be able to maintain your freedom in the universe or avoid the persuasions that will be cast upon a weak and divided humanity. And you will not be able to prepare for the great ways of change that are coming to the world. You will underestimate them. You will deny them. You will think they are a fantasy or a nightmare or an invention of someone. You will think the future will be like the past, but the future you are facing now will not be like the past. You are entering a new era, a new time, a new reality. Ready or not, uh, prepared or not, wise or foolish, you are entering this new panorama of life. For those who have vision and are sensitive, they have known they will be living in times of great and turbulent change. For those who can see beyond their own ideas and beliefs, who are not total prisoners of their ideology, they can see and feel the changing world. For the perceptive and the receptive, they are already feeling the power of the future, the signs of the world. For everyone is living in a time of revelation, which is the most tumultuous time there can be. But this time of revelation is not for one tribe, or one nation, or one region. It is for the whole. Now God must reveal the reality of the great ways of change, their great danger, and the great opportunities they present for human unity and cooperation. Now God must reveal the reality of life in the universe so that you may prepare and not fall prey to powerful persuasions that will be cast upon the human family which are being cast even as this moment. It is time to wake up from your foolish dreams uh, of success and failure to face the reality of the changing world, to face the reality that you will have to prepare for a future that will be very different from the past in so many ways. 
This is the prophecy of Sunni It will be terrible or difficult depending on human awareness and responsibility. But you cannot change what is coming. It is part of evolution. It is the product of humanity's abuse and overuse of your natural inheritance in this world. It is the product of humanity's broadcast into space. It is the result of your technological advancement and your destruction of the natural world. Who amongst humanity can see and know these things and to respond to this revelation? Those who can respond will come from all strata of society, in all walks of life. Think not your most educated will be the first to respond or your most sophisticated, or the celebrated individuals in the universities or the halls of government. For they can be as blind as anyone, and less prepared even to face the changing circumstances of the world. God has sent a prophet into the world to present the new message from God. And he will have to present the prophetic view and the prophetic revelations of this new message. They are not a product of his thinking or imagination. And he renders them reluctantly because of the danger and the great difficulties that they pull. Many people will perish in the future, either through poverty and oppression or through ignorance and foolishness. Nations will be tempted to go to war with each other over the remaining resources, which will become ever more difficult to secure. And the grievances of humanity, so long standing, will flare here and there and everywhere. Who will have the wisdom to see the great predicament that humanity is now facing? Who is aware of the great ways of change? For think not that one nation will be supreme if the world begins to fall, if human civilization begins to collapse. Think not that one nation will profit by the demise of other nations. For like dominoes they will fall, unable to sustain their people, unable to provide for their people, unable to create stability and security for their people, should they not prepare. At this time, governments should be preparing their peoples for the great ways of change and educating people about the interventions that is occurring here. Instead of hiding this, trying to protect their economies by keeping people in a state of flustered ignorance, you will need the support of the people to prepare. Leaders cannot do this behind the scenes. You will need everyone's help. It will not be the product of a few powerful people for they do not have the power to overcome the great ways of change, and they know not how to prepare for the greater community. For only God can teach you this. Even your allies in the universe cannot teach you how to prepare for the greater community because they do not know the full nature, character, and history of humanity. It will be God that will have to do this now. And that is exactly what is being given in the new message and revelation from the Creator. Think carefully then before you deny or reject the new revelation. 
but it offers humanity the only real guidance it can receive from the Creator as this team. Do not think this is one of many messages, or you will fail to see which is of the greatest importance and the greatest authenticity. Do not reject uh, that a new revelation can come to the world and that a new prophet can be sent here by the Creator, for no one in the world knows the mind of the Creator. And no one can proclaim, based upon ideology or upon ancient scripture, what God will do next. This is the arrogance and the foolishness of humanity. So sure it is of what God has done and will do next. You have only to look at the world and ask yourself, will we be able to face the great ways of change? You have only to ask yourself honestly, can I or anyone prepare us for contact with a greater community of intelligent life? A greater community that is filled with countless races, all struggling to survive. Ask yourself, do I really know what is happening in the universe around me? Do I know enough to prepare? Do I know anything? Can I presume anything? Look at your world. What to save humanity from ruin and decline? The great ways of change are greater than your technology. And your technology is hardly sufficient to protect you from infiltration from the universe. It will take a greater strength, a greater power, a greater self-determination on the part of individuals and nations of people. Only the new message reveals why this is the case, how human freedom and sovereignty in this world can be protected and built and established in the future so that humanity may fulfill its great promise of becoming a free and sovereign nation in the universe, where freedom is so very rare. For this you must receive the warning, the blessing, and the preparation that the Creator of our life has sent into the world. The messenger has received it. It has taken 25 years to receive it. It is the most complete message ever sent to humanity. It is a message for literate people. It is a message for modern people. It is a message that must describe in greater detail the reality of life in this world, the reality of life beyond this world, and the deeper nature of human spirituality at the level of knowledge. You know not what God is doing in the world because you know not what God is doing in the greater community of life. The limitations of human awareness and understanding now and humanity's propensity towards folly and self-deception are your greatest hazards. God's presence and power is to strengthen the human family. These are not the end times, but the time of great transition. This is not a time when the Savior will return, or the Imam will return, or the great exalted one will return, or God will send a humble man to deliver the new message from God. And he is not a leader, but a messenger. He is not a superhuman person, but he is charged with his mission. And it will make a great difference whether he is accepted or denied, whether he is listened to 
but reject it. If humanity chooses to fail, God will not intervene. If humanity chooses the path of conflict and destruction, the creator of all life will not intervene. It is the choice of a race, a choice between wisdom or ignorance, between honesty or self-deception, between greed and corruption, or unity and cooperation. Unity and cooperation now is essential. It is not merely an option. It is not based on high ideals or high ethics. It is based on absolute necessity. Time is of the essence. Humanity has time to prepare, but not much time. Every day, every month, and every year is significant is significant in terms of the welfare of the peoples of the world. It is significant in terms of the outcome. It is significant in terms uh, of what humanity will choose, what it will see, and the power it will have to act in its own welfare and benefit. So many races in the universe have failed in their encounter with intervention for more, only to fall prey in subjugation to powerful secular forces. So many nations have outstripped their wealth resources, only to find themselves impoverished and subject to great pressure and influence from beyond. God must give you this warning. If you do not heed the warning, you will not see the blessing of the new message. And you will not follow its preparation thinking that it is unnecessary, thinking that you have an answer for the future, thinking that you can prepare yourself, thinking that the future will be like the past. There is no more time for such foolishness now. The angels of the Creator have brought this great message. It is far greater than human understanding, and only the wisest amongst you will be able to fathom its depths, to realize the completeness of its message, and how essential it is to apply its wisdom in the world to know, and in all the days to come. God loves the world and humanity. Humanity has a great future in the universe. But it is not ready, and now it is facing a dangerous world and competition from beyond. Now its foolishness and its folly has caught up with it, and it must face the consequences. Now it must become serious about its future and its destiny, and stop pretending that it is alone in the universe or thinking that the universe is there for its own exploitation. This will be an immense challenge, not only practically, but psychologically and spiritually. This will be an immense confrontation, requiring a tremendous shift in your understanding. And you do not have much time. This is the gift of love from the Creator of our life. Love that surpasses human understanding. Love that is not merely kind and pleasant and pleasurable. It is the love a parent shows for their child. It is the love the Creator shows for creation. It is strong, it is powerful, it is demanding. It is vital, it is everlasting. But the question always is, will humanity follow wisdom? Will humanity receive from the Creator for life? Will humanity be honest about its predicaments? 
Will it look ahead? Will it plan for the future? Will it look and see what is coming over the horizon? Will it face the reality it is no longer alone in the universe or even within its own world? Will it realize that it is facing a world in decline, for which it will have to adapt and prepare? These are the questions that the human family must answer, as every race in the universe must answer for themselves. God has given you a deeper knowledge to make the wise decision. It is not merely up to your ideas or your philosophy or your habits or your convention. For God has given you a greater intelligence to catch you now. And it is this intelligence that will protect you and guide you individually and together in the future. It is this intelligence that will honor the presence of the new revelation. It is this presence that will allow the messenger safe passage in the world. It is this presence that will upgrade humanity's religious institutions so that they may work together for the benefit of humanity. It is this wisdom that will allow nations to cooperate, to strengthen one another for the protection of the world. Great ways of change have the power to destroy human civilization. But they also have the power to create a united and strong humanity. As nothing else has been able to accomplish. The creator community can defeat you and overtake you without the use of violence. But that is not its method. But it can also call for human unity and strength so that you may garner respect and regard by those who live in this region of Spain. For you do not have that respect and regard at this moment. This is the difficult message you must hear, and you must listen with your mind and with your heart. This is the challenge that you must stay with, for it is more important than anything else in the whole world. For what could you gain if the world should decline and human civilization should begin to collapse? And what could you gain or what problem could you solve that would be meaningful if human freedom and sovereignty were to be overtaken by others? You must hear this message with your heart. And your deeper knowledge within you will confirm it. Be you of any religion or any nation, be you of any persuasion, the power of knowledge is still within you, and there can be no dissension in knowledge. Let this be your understanding. Okay, well hopefully you were able to hear all of that. What you just heard was a new message from God titled, The New World Prophecy received by Marshall Vion Summers in 2009 and being released today. One of hundreds and hundreds of revelations of the new message, each of which is an angelic encounter between Marshall and this presence that he had been working with for many years and now today, many decades. So thank you for being here and being the first to receive this revelation from Marshall Vion Summers. Um, it's good that we're all here and reassembled. I know we had some technical problems in the beginning. The internet was actually fully out uh, across a swath of my neighborhood. <laughs> and so some of our technicians couldn't even get in. Um, and yet here I am, a little island of, of Wi-Fi uh, in, in a sea of darkness out there. So um, great that we could do this. And, um, and also indicative of the future, you know. Things are no longer a given. Uh, the safety of our neighborhoods from fire and windstorms, um, the presence of the power grid, the presence of internet, um, the presence of, of law enforcement, you know, as the world begins to break down more and more under the stress of this pandemic, uh, and as the foundation of our infrastructure starts to shake, teeter, 
I think we're going to come upon these moments where uh, we're living in a different world than we've known. It's not the world we thought we knew. And so something is required from us. And, and that's really what this revelation is all about. It's about the individual. It's about you and each person doing what you know you need to do based upon what you know, what the new message calls knowledge or the spiritual mind within you. And the accumulation of millions and hundreds of millions of people doing what they most deeply know, what their conscience is telling them to do instead of their, their rational self-interest and or the hundreds of other you know uh, things that influence and condition our thinking. Hundreds of millions of people doing what they most deeply know will add up to be a solution for this world, given the crises it's facing. That's what the new message tells us. And yet I do think it's good to step back, uh, which I did in preparation for today, listening to this revelation and thinking to myself, somewhat on behalf of the majority of the world, we're facing what we're facing. It's a pandemic, it's climate change, it's you know, social disruption and division. What does a new message from God got to do with that? Why would we need a revelation from a higher power? These are worldly problems. We need, we need the science to deal with them, the technology to deal with them, the policy and the political leadership to deal with them. We need the laws to deal with them. We need all of that. Why would we need anything from God? And I think that's reasonable because we do need all of that. That's absolutely true. But there's something else we need too. It's what the new message calls the missing ingredient. It's what moves the individual at the deepest level. And that is not science. It is not technology. It is not policy. It's not even good leadership. It's something deep within each of us that compels the most simple act of kindness or contribution or service in the world. And what sparked that? Why does it happen that people give their lives in ways that are selfless and that are not according to their logical self-interest? and do it for their whole lifetime and give tremendously. Why does that happen? I feel, and I believe the new message teaches that it is the spiritual reality within us that compels us to do these things because they must be done and we know that they must be done. This all comes back to what compels the decision-making of individuals. That added up over time will equal the answer and the outcome for this world. And so facing this planetary emergency, bigger than any of us can really conceive of, and yet actionable in each of our individual lives in ways we can conceive of, in very real ways, in ways we already, things we already know to do and yet don't do. People know they need to turn off the lights and drive less and eat less beef and do all the things the world needs them to do differently, but they don't. And I believe that's a matter of conscience. It's a crisis of conscience in the world. Not enough people are, being, are able to experience the movement of knowledge within them, the movement of spirit, and to do what that spirit would have them do in real moments that present themselves each day. And so this has everything to do with the divine because the divine is what activates this spirit. The divine is this spirit. The new message teaches that God is the sum of the spiritual presence in all sentient life. That is what God is. It's a presence that is within us and that we all come together to create uh, across the whole universe. So we have this enormous planetary emergency and we have this deep solution to that within each individual. And without that, is there an answer? Is there a way forward? The new message says there is not. And it says that the movement of knowledge is insufficient in the world right now to add up to a real answer to the crisis that humanity is facing. And that is why there's a new message from God. It is all about feeling what we know and acting upon that in our real lives in ways that we would not personally choose to do for our own personal interest, but that must be done for the future of this world. And another reason why we need a new message here is that I don't think Personally, I or we, or even as a collective, as a nation, a community, have the long view on the future of this world. We think in a very short time horizon. And that makes sense. You know, we're trying to live and be successful within 
a time horizon we can measure and experience and ultimately benefit from. Uh, but who's looking on the 50-year time scale, the 100-year time scale? Is anyone on earth looking at that time scale and acting on that time scale? Well, the creator of all life is. God is seeing and acting on that time scale. And if we are not, but need to be far in advance of when the change we would need to enact must be enacted, then we would need some sort of warning, some sort of revelation to tell us what is the larger view on the state of the world today? Where are we going? And what would we need to do now to prepare for that? And that is why a new revelation is in the world. It is to give us that revelation, that preparation, and as you heard today, that prophecy, that vision of the future that is coming. Uh, so a lot to take in, and really it all comes back to knowledge. And uh, there, I noted when we just heard the revelation here uh, that it said, this will be an immense challenge, practically, physiologically, and also spiritually. And so my question is, who's up for a spiritual challenge? Because I'm not sure we pair the word challenge and spirituality together all that often. Spirituality is more the refuge from challenge. It's more the reprieve. But there is a challenge here that must be met at the level of spirit. And that is, can we hear this movement within us? Can we get the message? And can we act upon it, follow through, based upon something we spiritually know? not just rationally know or scientifically know. It's a challenge. So great times call for greatness within each of us. And the new message is calling for greatness at this level, this remarkable presence within each of us that has already moved our lives, has already taken us on a mystery journey to meet certain people, to get to a certain place, to do something important in the world, it's still in us moving. And the challenge is, can we unite with it enough and live close enough to it to render a contribution to a world going into a future unlike anything we ever thought possible? So this is the challenge that I leave you with. And I think you're up for it. You know, We all want to be useful in the world and to carry some load for some greater purpose and deliver something of value up the mountain and get it up high up and, and then look back on our lives and feel a sense of achievement. So we're all ready for this. We're designed to carry a load and take it somewhere. So there's a new load. Not enough people are carrying it. And it's time now. Time is running out. And we've got to get it down the road. The world is counting on us. And there will be many who join that and many who don't. And even those who don't, they'll carry the load too, because the load is the burden of knowing and acting on what you know. And that's happening all over the world. It's not just those who are aware of the new message doing that It's all over the world, as it must be. Um, I forgot to mention that I will take a question or two, if there are a question or two. So I'm going to give you a moment to ponder that offer. Uh, also a comment. If you'd like to make a comment, I'll read that aloud. Uh, what we're doing today is something we're going to do every two weeks. Uh, for the next few months, we're going to broadcast a new revelation uh, for the world to hear. And so we'll smooth out our process and, and, uh, and get, 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 get off this Wi-Fi island and, and get back into connectivity. Um, but I do hope you can be a part of this going forward. And um, I appreciate you being here to receive the revelation today. So as you think about my offer to ask a question or make a comment, I'm going to share with you a couple next steps you can take in light of the revelation you heard today. This revelation is now available online in text and audio at newmessage.org forward slash world prophecy. And it will be translated into over 20 languages in the months ahead and made available for all people to hear. This revelation is a part of a future book called The New World Prophecy which will be forthcoming. And uh, there are also other books currently available that very much speak on this topic of what is coming and what we can do to prepare for it. So the new world is available online for free in text and audio. The Great Waves of Change is available online for free. 
this book itself was a predecessor to the revelation you heard today. It was, it was also a, a series of revelations given one year before this one in 2008. So these are some of the first revelations of the new message on the new world that we're now entering and that we need to prepare for. So with that, I'm going to go see if I have any questions or comments. One viewer says, yes, friends, challenging info. I am called to it and afraid of it, yet it rings so true. And I think that's something we can all resonate with. There is some fear in facing a reality this big, this unknown. It's going to bring up thoughts of self-worth, of uh, uncertainty about how you'll do it, uh, concern about the foundation of your life, your health, your work, your relationships, which is totally natural. It's totally natural to experience fear when facing something big and new that has the power to change your life and the world. So I really counsel us not to get into this love-fear dichotomy and try to be all loving, and try to avoid fear at all costs and in all situations. Fear is an immensely important evolutionary signal that your body is sending to you, that there is something new in your space and it has the power to negatively affect you, also positively affect you. So just take it as a sign of, of the time you're in and the opportunity at hand. Moving through fear, unpacking what's behind fear, building strength and resilience so that that fear response diminishes. It's taking less of the tense, the tension and the load because the natural strength of your life is taking up more tension and more load. Those are the steps I think we need to take. But fear is a very natural response here. We have a question, and the grievances of humanity so long standing will flare here and there and everywhere. The need to overcome these conflicts by stepping up to the spiritual challenge. How? Good question. And as with all really good questions that may lead to really real responses or movement in life, it can't be answered for everybody because it's an individual answer in your life. How you answer that question is, is immensely interesting and different than how I will answer that question. But I think there are overall guardrails to keep us on the right road and moving and not going off the highway. Uh, and so, you know, one important thing here, because I do agree, I think the grievances of humanity are so immense and they're only starting to flare. There's so much deep animosity, and deep traumas in this world. Upholding a spiritual challenge in the face of that may be to withdraw from those grievances and not participate in them, to not add energy to them, uh, and to add energy elsewhere. And sometimes the only way to be free of something is literally to depart it, to let it go, walk away. And some of these grievances need to be abandoned. People just need to walk away from them. There is no resolution. And so for those who are upholding the spiritual challenge, I think stepping back from conflict and disengaging is a super important thing to do in many cases, not all cases, because some of these grievances may have your name on them. They may be for you to deal with specifically, but if that's true, then that's part of your spiritual challenge because you know it. It's knowledge within you telling you that problem has your name on it. You need to go and deal with that. And you've got the nature and the design and the skill base and the experience to offer something. So go, go into it. But you're going to know that. And stepping into such a grievance or challenge in the world while maintaining your connection to knowledge will be challenge enough. You will be at the seat of your pants, just staying in the, in the saddle of the spiritual challenge as you deal with a worldly challenge, seemingly worldly. Um, and so I think it's very important to pick your battles you only have so much life force. Uh, your life is specific, specific place, specific people, specific contribution. And so be very careful where you give your life and where you choose to be and who you choose to be with, what you choose to do, because it's specific. And it takes time to build up, to build your connection to knowledge, to be able to get an authentic signal 
to know that's it. Go that way. Do more of that. So there's a stepping back in the beginning anyway. It's important to pull away and not just take the plunge at, you know, in every disagreement and controversy in the world and, and build up some power and some confidence and some certainty that can be deployed through your life to, to make a contribution. But great question, how? And that's why there is a community of students in the world who are reading and studying the new message. They are finding out how in their life and they're making mistakes. They're having successes. They're getting wiser, hopefully. <laughs> Can't say that definitively, but I hope so. And we're all discovering the how together. So with that, thank you for joining me. I'd like, I wanted to keep this sweet and short. In two weeks, we're going to be broadcasting a new revelation. And I'll put a few links up on screen here for you all. To read today's revelation, any of the books of the New Message, you can go to newmessage.org forward slash library. They're all free. They're all available for you to read. They're translated into many languages for you to share out into the world. We have new revelations coming out in the month of February and March, which you see here. I'll be with you in two weeks, same time, same place, to share with you Restoring the World, a revelation being released by Marshall Vian Summers. And then finally, we have a three-day gathering uh, coming up in February, which is about learning and practicing the new message. It's a back-to-basics event about what it means to be a student of the new message, to receive this revelation, and to learn about the, the new realities that the new message reveals. And so I invite you to join us for that. There's more information at newmessage.org forward slash vigil. And so with that, thank you for joining me and thank you for your patience amidst all these technical storms. And we hope for a more stable experience in two weeks. And with that, I will sign off. Good to be with you all. Keep going, keep moving, and please do take in this revelation. Thank you.